Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome to episode eight. Now, you see, I have set up a little mini shop here. So, I've got a sell desk and a buy desk. So, I've already got 10 uh, money. So, I could buy the call if I want. And if I hold down the E key, there we go. A new one spawns in and I can drag this over into my train and uh, and chuck it in the engine if I so choose. We can get that one in. There we go. And oh no, I don't have any money, but thankfully there's a gold bar lying around. And if I drag this into the cell area, there we go. We have 50 lots of money. So that's what we're going to make today. So the first thing I'll do, I'll just copy and paste uh, those little desks I made earlier. Uh, there's nothing special about these at all. It is literally uh, just two parts and a little decal on it. And the cell box, again, just uh, two parts with a decal. But I've also added this little uh, ka-ching sound effect inside of the box, which we will play later. Um, but that's it. There's nothing special about these models at all. You can probably make something that looks a lot nicer than these. So let's drag in our items from the uh, the item folder in our assets. Actually, we won't drag them. We'll copy and paste them in. So we keep those there um, for our item generation. So if I place the coal over here in the buy area, uh, now, currently, it has this tag of draggable, which means the player can interact with it. Obviously, we don't want that, so remove that tag, and we're going to anchor it instead. Um, but we're going to create a new tag. We'll call this uh, for sale. Okay, so we can react to this from our script in a moment. And then this, uh, the cell box, and we'll select specifically this box part, which is slightly transparent. And the can collide and can query are both disabled for this. It is anchored, and we're gonna add in a tag called cell box. Okay. Which means that we're then gonna be able to find this from our script. So let's create a new script in server script service. We will call this shop handler. I'm gonna want a couple of services to start off with. Collection service for accessing the tags. Player service, because obviously we're going to be interacting with the players and their money. And then server storage for accessing those items from the folder. So first off, let's set up some money for the player. So we'll react to player.player added. Connect that to a function. So as soon as the player joins the game, we're going to create some leader stats for them. This is literally just a folder with the name of leader stats and Roblox can kind of set up the rest for us. So we'll add in some money, which will just be an int value. And you could set an initial value if you like this. So we'll give them maybe uh, 10 bucks to start off with. And the name, we're just gonna call this money. You could do it gold or dollars or whatever you like, but you parent that to the leader stats and then finally parent the leader stats to the player. And now when we join the game, we see we've got 10 lots of money. And also let's just check if I go over to this piece of coal, I definitely can't pick it up because it hasn't got the draggable tag that I can walk into this area. Cool. Obviously, if I drag these in, uh, nothing's going to happen at the moment. So we're going to use collection service in order to react to stuff. So let's do our selling items first. We'll have a function called setup sell box which will have a cell box as its uh, parameter. And then we'll use collection service to detect collection service, get instance added signal. So if there's any cell box that gets added, and it's really important this is the same name as the tag we did, which was definitely cell box, capital S, capital B. And we'll connect that to our setup cell box function. And let's do a little print. Just say setting up and cell box. So if I click play, I'm probably not going to actually see anything in the output at all. And that's because the get instance added is only reacting to new stuff. So we also want to check what's currently in the game. So if we do a little loop or I object in collection service and we use the get tagged function, we can get everything currently in the game that's tagged the cell box. That gives a little table that we can loop through. And we will just set up again. So now if I was to run, we should see setting up box down the output. Cool. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is if you want to, say, duplicate this into buildings or such like, 
uh, and you're going to be dynamically adding this in and out of the world. Um, and so there's going to be one in like replicate the storage or server storage. Then you do want to make sure that this cell box is inside of the workspace. So you could just do a quick check if we can find the ancestor of it and if it is in workspace. And if it's not, then return end and just ignore it. But otherwise, let's react to something touching the box. So use the touched event, connect to a function which tells us what other part has hit it. And we want to see if that other part has the sellable tag. So remember our gold bar previously, we gave it a tag of sellable. So let's check. If the other part has a tag of sellable, or if it does not have one, return end. We don't care. But otherwise, we want to check um, which player is dragging that in, right? Who Who's the person that's trying to sell this part? So we can get their player by actually getting the other part get network owner. Because remember, we always assign network ownership to the person that's dragging it. And then we also want to know how much this thing is worth. So there's two ways of doing this. You could add a attribute um, to every part, but that can get a bit messy if you've got lots of parts and you end up with different attributes. So the best thing to do, I think, is create a module script, call this shop items, and then we can just create a very basic table. So we might have a gold bar in here and you can provide all kinds of different information, but we'll just set a value of 50. And we could say that coal, that is worth 10. And if you have different weapons and stuff in your game, uh, you could add them in here. You could add a, a description or something, right? But just value is fine. We'll just have gold bar coal. We're not going to add pottery because we've set that as junk. We've decided that isn't sellable. Uh, so now we've got this data. Let's make sure we're referencing it at the top here. So shop items equals require the module script, script dot shop items. And now we can just check um, the name of that other part because we've got it all lined up called gold bar here, called gold bar here. It's all the same names. So the item data is equal to the shop items and we're referencing it using the other part dot name. So if that part has a player, if someone's carrying it and we found the item data, then we can sell the thing. So player dot leader stats and we need to get the name of our money. So it's money with a capital M dot money dot value. And we want to add to it whatever the item data says. So item data dot value. Then since they've sold it, we can get rid of the, the part. So other part uh, destroy. Again, I'm assuming it's just a part in this case. Uh, you may have a model in which case uh, you're going to need to make sure that you're getting the network owner of the, the primary part of the model. But once we've destroyed it, well, let's play that little ka-ching noise added as well. So that's cellbox dot ka-ching and play. So let's see how I get this gold bar, move it into the area. And there we go. I've now got 60 lots of money. And if I try and move my pottery in, well, that's not worth anything. So I can't sell that. It's just junk. Awesome. Now let's do our buying. So underneath the cell box logic, let's do a new function. Function setup shop item, which will have the item as its parameter. And then a similar thing with the, the tags, we'll just copy and paste that. But this time we're looking for anything with the for sale tag, because that's what I gave my piece of coal that's on the, the sale box, the sale um, table, whatever we'll call it. We call it for sale. So make sure we're using that same word here for sale. And then we want to check the data about it from our shop, uh, shop items module. So local item data equals shop items, reference it with the item dot name. If we don't have any data for some reason, something's obviously gone wrong. So we'll just give a little warning in the output and return. Um, but otherwise, assuming everything's fine, we then want to see if this asset exists inside of server storage. So the asset dot assets go to item and find something again with the item dot name. And we can basically just copy and paste this. So if there's not an asset, then we'll just say no asset for that item. So now we know there's data about the item and we do have an asset that we can clone and give to the player. Now let's make this um, setup for sale. 
So I'm going to use a proximity prompt for this. So we'll add in instance.new proximity prompt. And I want you to have to hold it down for uh, one second. And the action tax is going to say by plus whatever the name of the thing is, which we can get from the item.name. And then for the prompt.object text, which is a little of like a, a secondary text or so like a subheading, we'll just give the player the price. So dollar dot dot item dot val item data dot value right from that shop items module. So now we can set the prompt dot parent equal to our item. And if we now head play and head over to our call, let's check this. There's the prompt. Um, nope, there's not what we're doing here. Nothing in the output. Um, oh, I see. We're calling the wrong function. So let's make sure we're calling the setup shop item function. That's the trouble when you copy and paste stuff. You miss things sometimes. So now we should see the prompt on the item. There we go. See, $10 by coal. Cool. Now, if we interact with it, nothing's going to happen. So we need to hook into that event. So just beneath here, we can say prompt dot triggered. That's the event. Connect that to another function, which gives us the player who's trying to buy it. And we need to check whether they can actually afford it. So can afford and we'll check the players leader stats dot money dot value and whether that is greater or equal to the value of the item they want to buy. So if they can afford it, then let's create a copy. Well, first, actually, uh, let's remove the item. So player.leaderstats.money.value minus equals the value of the item they're buying, and then we'll go and give them it. So the new item is equal to the asset, create a copy of it, and the new item.cframe, I'm just going to place it almost in the same position as the store asset, but then just slightly offset it. So say one item dot size dot y and another one. So, so it's offset a little bit. And then that new item we will parent into workspace dot items. Cool. So that's our script. So if we go over and play, we've got 10 lots of money in the bank. If we hold it and buy it. Oh, and we have got an hour. There you go. Being too confident. So C frame expected. Oh, I needed just to say asset dot C frame. There we go. And if I buy the item, oh, it's taking the money, but where's the, oh, the coal's all the way over here. I think we need to fix that C frame as well. So in the shop handler, oh yeah, we're setting the new items to be the asset dot C frame, which is the one from our server storage. We meant to put it in the, to the item dot C frame. Let's try that one more time. So here we go, we buy the item and there we go, it appears on the top and I can drag it and do whatever I like with it. And it, I can sell my gold bar and feel pretty rich. Cool. So that is it for today's episode. Hopefully that helps you getting a shop set up for your Dead Rails game. You could even position these sell items inside of your station or another building along the map, which could be pretty cool. Um, but that's about all for today's episode. If you want to get access to the scripts and all the resources from this episode, then check out the Gnome Code Academy. Link will be down in the description. But that's it for today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye!